In this video series, we are taking a Stream Deck Plus and we are using Reactor to drive the contents on the Stream Deck Plus. Um, we have actually hacked the access to the Stream Deck Plus ourselves, turned it into a raw panel product so that it has the same protocol as any Skyhoy product, either one of the good old legacy products or like this new blue pill inside Rack Fusion Live. By the way, this panel and this one, also a Rack Fusion Live, they um, they are similar. They they would look to react exactly the same. Although this one has blue pill inside, this one has Unisketch. If you have the Unisketch panel, you would need the blue pill, which is the one this guy that is actually driving today's demonstration. So everything we're doing on screen is coming from the blue pill. Could also have been from the blue pill inside panel. So if you, um, you're very likely to get Skyhoy products today with blue pill inside, so you do not have to have the external blue pill. However, if you want to drive the Stream Deck, you need the external blue pill because that's the only way thing you, the way you can connect USB-A, that is the Stream Deck connected to the blue pill, and this is how the Stream Deck is uh, driven. So this cable goes into the blue pill and drives the Stream Deck power and signal and everything. Now, for today's demonstration, we'll be using the simulator here. Uh, on the screen. So uh, we have basically um, the both the, the blue pill, but in particular, let's just disable that. Uh, we have the Stream Deck Plus, and I uh, will just zoom in, put that in focus of our demonstration. The previous videos, I started to copy paste code in because I already know where I'm going to go. And uh, I have also shown the uh, like uh, end product of this demonstration to you guys. So <clears throat> to not spend too much time typing, I'm just going into the project um, code that I have shared with you previously in these videos. And then I'm going to copy paste the menu layer in because the next thing that we'll be doing is to create a layer on top of the preset recall layer that is driving the fourth display and encoder with a little menu where we can enter in and we can adjust our audio sources and the DVE of the ATEM switcher. So basically, let's go into the edit raw here and then paste this uh, block of layer code in that I just did. Uh, th this editor you're looking at right now, I really wish I could take credit for that one, but it is in fact visual code, VS, uh, VS code, which is uh, somehow embeddable in, in products like this one, pretty awesome. And that means you have an incredible text editor inside of Reactor. So uh, thank you guys for that. Uh, let's just uh, open this one up, then paste this layer in here into the uh, layer object and save the current file. Let's go back to the configuration tab and we should now see that we actually already have this one going on over here. Now, um, I think that I may have a different browser window open so that we can sort of study things inside of this one. And that would be super helpful because then we can have it side by side. And let's opening up this one. So you see the menu layer is this one we just created. And inside that menu layer, we have two variables and we have um, a layer called exit and one called audio and one called, one called DB positions. So the exit layer is like a bottom layer. You see, they are all conditioned by various things. And first of all, this layer up here, DVE positions, will be shown if the variable setting menu equals the value DVE pus, and if show settings is show. And this one, if the setting menu is audio and the show setting is show. And this one, if the show setting is just show. And that is like a fallback layer that if you click on any of these buttons, you see it's kind of blank. So just make sure that the button won't show anything. Um, and then finally, we have these two variables down here. So let's just for fun, see what happens if we manipulate these ma variables manually. We, we can, uh, first of all, go to show setting and say, let's set the variable to this one. So now you see that the variable show setting is equal to show, meaning that this layer gets visibility. And then this layer up here, DV position, is uh, getting visibility. Now, notice this one. If you know, with the layer stack, you see that whatever is on DV positions, button five, six, seven, eight, is now being shown. That would be these four buttons here. And encoder one, two, three, and four down here is being shown. And down on the exit layer, you have button number one two, three, and four. So that is the top four buttons are still being defined down here, but five, six, seven, and eight are sort of um, grayed out. 
because they are overridden by these four buttons right there. And then finally, I have to find the full swipe, which is this one. That is the swipe action on the, on the Stream Deck. So you can, you can basically, uh, it is touch sensitive. And uh, that means that on, on this one, we can actually swipe ourselves through these uh, different ones. For whatever reason, uh, now I had it working, but it sometimes is pretty weird in how it works. So it is a little bit strange. It's actually easier to get working in the simulator here, but obviously that is not the real product. So um, that, that is a bug I need to look at in the implementation with the Stream Deck. But anyway, this uh, full swipe is then defined down here, the action of that one. And uh, if we look closely at that, so it's just setting menu step change. So it's basically just simple manipulation of that one, like if it was an encoder. So that is super easy. Ah, wait, step change. That would actually, it could sort of explain why, because it's not rolling over. Oh, but did I change that? Yeah, I tried to set the pulsed rollover condition. Okay, so never mind. Now the um, the setting menu is the other thing. That is this variable here. If we set that to audio instead, then we see the audio layer. So that would change between these two in case the uh, show menu is, is on. Okay. I did something complex in here though, and that is, um, and why was that? Let's, let's just check. Oh yeah. Uh, why did I do this? Hmm. I know this is a little bit painful, but the the encoders I defined up here for encoder one, two, three, and four are actually pretty straightforward. I just use a parameter and step change long range. There's really no no thrills in here, except I decided to put in a different position on the title. Maybe let's look at this in the JSON editor because this would be should be at least uh, fairly easy to kind of uh, understand. Now open the layer, the top layer, then the behaviors here, and then we can look at encoder number one, encoder number two. So you see they are using step change long range. They, they are changing the DVE position, X DVE position Y, DVE size X and DVE size Y here. And then I'm just overriding the display text the title up here so that it says you know things that I like a little bit oh it's down here position x position y size x size y by the way these very very tiny text is actually not how it looks in real life and that is one difference in the simulator to the panel because you see that they are more clear to see unfortunately these are also not operable at the moment I have somehow lost connection to my ATEM switcher and this is weekend it's gaming day I have two kids on the network they are spoiling the experience for all of us and this this is why somehow I lose the IP address of the ATEM switcher so hopefully it's back soon but we are kind of out of luck at the moment. Okay, I may have to pause the video, but it may also come back in a short while. So let's just uh, continue here. But at least if we looked at the code between these encoders, it's pretty easy. Now, the thing is that it's actually the encoders that I did specified this for. So why is this shown on the displays? Well, because what I did in the key map here is something sort of advanced. I took basically every of these encoder definitions and then I decided to just map it over to the displays to P115. And then I'm not sure that was super clever of me. I should probably have mapped it to this one. This is what I could have done. Okay, let's just experimentally probably this one, yeah, that one disappeared. So now this one just disappeared. But if I mapped it to this one, which is being used further down, then it would correctly map to this one again. That, that would actually be much better. So let me just quickly change that. It's, it's uh, me trying to teach you a little bit about how HVC key mapping functions. Okay, so what is actually happening here is on this layer, I am defining encoder one, two, three, and four. And I want that not only to affect the encoders, but also to be mapped onto the display. So I just have to configure this a single time and being used by two 
you know, different hardware components because it, the definition has both both information for displaying it and also for changing it. So I'm basically saying encoder number one should be mapped over to display one, but encoder number one should also be mapped to itself once again, encoder number one. The thing is, if you own, if you the first time you map this to display number one, the definition of encoder one is going to disappear. So you wouldn't see this definition below this point anymore unless you map it to itself. And that's what I have done for these four encoders being defined here, mapped so that they beyond below this point, outside of this layer, when you look at it from menu and then further down in the layer stack, you'll, you'll find the same behavior defined for encoder one and display one. Okay, hopefully you got that now. Uh, and I do exactly the same here, although I should actually also for the clarity of things, do the same with these display two, display three, and display four. All right, perfect. Now, um, let's just see how this is actually functioning. Okay, so we are in simulation mode. Let me just press the exit button up here. That would be defined down on button number four. How did I do that? I just have um, the variable show settings, set value to hide. You see, this is one of the cases where it's actually picking up the values from the variable and showing nicely in here. If you look into the JSON, you also find that we have default feedback and I'm including the source icon that shows it like this. Let's click it, we exit, because it sets this one back to hide instead of show. If I click this one, it goes back to show and I need to press exit to get it back to hide. So you see the navigation is basically this, okay? Now, if I, if I click down here on this encoder, then um, on the uh, encoder itself, if, if I click to the side, then we change between input audio and DVE position. Uh, so that is changing this variable, but notice that the, the menu won't show before I am pressing the encoder itself so that this one changes to show, and this is what will show expose any of these layers up here. If we take a look at how this encoder is defined, then um, uh, it's also pretty straightforward. Um, no, 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 no. It doesn't feel like it's forward. No, I also need to exit out because I didn't intend to actually go in there. We need to look at this guy. Uh, I was looking at something up there. Now it is changing uh, show setting with step change. So that's really straightforward. And um, then I, yes, the setting menu is being changed by step change, but I'm adding the event handler recall on a single press, it is going to enter into the menu by setting the value show for show settings. This is how it works. Okay, so that that's what the encoder does. If we look at the display here, then you will see that the display has a composition that is very much alike what you've seen in previous videos. So let's not spend too much time on that. Uh, we have basically the layer with the underlying image, which is now offset all the way over for the final tile, then we have graphics for the background and so on. So this is all predictable, I would say. Um, yeah, so let's not spend more time on that either. So the interesting thing might be to uh, explore presets. In fact, that's the promise of this video, that is to look at uh, presets. And um, I think once again, I would enjoy to take you into the code. I copied this in previously. So at the, um, at the very bottom of the code, I've defined a number of preset kinds. So let's just study that a little bit. I have an audio preset and I have a DVE preset. And um, maybe I should demonstrate it first actually, so that you know what I'm talking about. So let's go in here and uh, no, wait, let's go to the simulator. So you have like full screen, totally full screen. All right, so let's go into audio. And here in audio, we can adjust the audio of the ATEM switcher by these. No, by this one down here. <laughs> I get confused. The swipes, there's swipes on the displays and those swipes um, can be coded just like an encoder, like left and right, left and right. So like turning, but it's of course the encoder down here that is being used. Now, um, so I can adjust these and these are just a simple, if, if you go in here and look at the encoders as they are defined up here, and that is the same for the DVE, it is uh, it's not entirely true. I'm using something from the mega panel called Fairlight Audio Volume. So that is the master behavior there. But I just type in the uh, audio input and um, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of, of time on that. If you go up here, then it was step change long range to change stuff for the DVE. The point is that I can change this with the encoders. But the preset buttons, that is the thing. So let's look at the presets. So button number five here, the, oh, this one that is currently for audio, 
it is um, using a behavior called audio presets. So that's a master behavior I've created, and it has preset number one. So if you look at, num at this one, number six, it's just the same behavior, audio presets, preset ID number two, number three, number four over here. And that would be the same pattern up here, DV presets number one, number two, number three, and number four for the... Um, for the preset record buttons. Because the thing is, if we go into the simulator and we try to uh, press these buttons, notice what happens to the values down here. If I press this one, if I press this one, I should see changes to these. Why is that not the case? I might have rebooted something and it forgot. To okay, sorry. <clears throat> I was confused because in my preparations, I was working on a different project and there the preset values were stored. So right now we have something stored on preset number three. And uh, if we change with the encoders, we can change some positions of the DVE where we are right now, uh, like this. And we press and hold this one, it's going to save and it's going to get green for a short moment. Now, if I press this one, notice that all the DVE settings are changing. If I press this one, it's changing back. So I basically have two presets here. Watch the first video. There you see it on the original project and you see it with the real Stream Deck uh, Plus and you also see it inside the uh, ATEM software control. We can do the same for audio. So let's just exit here and then change over to, uh, to uh, audio uh, here, click in, and then we uh, will be able to uh, see the same. Now, the, the quick way of doing that would be to manipulate these a little bit so that we have a, a different set of things going on over here. And um, then in the web browser simulator here, then let's just um, limit that slightly. Okay, so I press and hold this one to save a preset over here. So now let's go over there and you see that it, it changes the settings to whatever was stored in this preset. And if I click here, then it's resetting to this one. So that's what we are getting. And I uh, we have two things that we need to see now. Uh, that is to understand how was this really done. And the thing is that we have for the menu layer, we have a master behavior. No, actually it's defined all the way down on the plus layer here. So we have one called audio presets and DVE presets. So these two could be inspected here. And we can see that um, they are based on something called paint presets. So we use the same underlying master behavior as we're doing on the RCP and so on. But then we are adding a little bit on top or changing some things. So I like to just use the JSON to see what that might be. And that is as you can see, we are inheriting from this one. And um, and then for the IO reference, we are calling a IO reference called preset. And I use DVE preset as my reference. That is the presets that I defined in the source code that you can't see um, before I change over. Uh, I'm recalling the preset by its preset ID. That is the constant that I was setting. And um, with the device index, which is important because when you're storing a preset, you need to not only have the preset ID, but also the device index you're doing it for, since we are um, depending on the device index on, um, I mean, if you have multiple ATEM switches and so on. Um, but anyway, you should be careful with the presets because the preset engine is really powerful and allows you to do uh, something called timelines. We have big visions for it, but right now we're only using it for static instantaneous recall of settings. Um, but the the behavior itself is fairly straightforward because it works very much like recalling and storing presets on a PC camera. And the real interesting part would be over here if we um, looked at the, uh, were we actually studying that? Um, or did we have that in a different browser right here? Yeah, the presets kinds that we were studying. So if we look inside of this, let's take it for audio. Then let's open this one up. You see it has uh, instant is the one that will give us instant recall of the presets. But if you look inside of parameters, then you see we have defined eight parameters. Let's open up the first one. This parameter has the device core key ATEM. Action key would be Fairlight audio mixer input volume position. And then dimension number one is a reference to the input. Let's open this guy, the next one. This would be um, the mixer option. This is what defines whether it is muted or not or audio follow video. And that is also for input number one. So if we open this one, then you see this is the same just for input number two. And then the next two would be for input number three, volume position and mix option. And then finally, 
here, volume position and mix option for four. So presets will take these eight parameters from the ATEM switcher and store and recall as I was pressing the buttons you saw just a moment ago right here. And that's how presets work. You can do that for any device, any combination of devices. And then you wouldn't be surprised to see that it's exactly the same that's happening for DVE presets. Only here we have two dimensions because for the DVE, you need to specify the ME and also which Kia it is for. So this is why you have one and one, but all the time this is the same. So only the actual action key, whether it's DVE position X, Y, DV size X and Y, that is what we are storing inside of this one. Okay, guys, so um, that was presets uh, and how that has been mapped down into a little menu here that allows us to adjust some of it and also have some preset recall buttons on top of it.